Well, hey. How's it going? Uh, I am gonna address the elephant in the room. My acrylics have come off. And I am on my MacBook uh, webcam. But we have a better audio setup than last time. Last time was pretty scuffed. Um, this? Oh, I'm not wearing makeup. Yeah. Um, oh no, you really were talking. Okay, there's no tutorial for this. I just like to show it off because I've never worked with fur and I'm really proud of it. As cursed as it may be. Anyway, you guys are probably here for the black eyes tutorial. I will bring it to you. Uh, it's I did put my hood up because my hair, and aka my bangs, are making me look like a fool. More so than usual. Anyway, here she is. One thing I want to say before we get started, because last time I posted a um, foam gun prop tutorial, I got a lot of comments of people yelling at me and being very um, <clears throat> rude and tasteless. I wanna get one thing clear, one thing straight, guys. I never claim to know anything about these things, all right? Cool, 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 cool. I uh, don't care if they're inaccurate. This one's very inaccurate in terms of its ratios, but guess what? I had to sketch this entire thing up by myself. Using in-game references. It's not the easiest thing to do. Better, better said than done. Easier said than done. Anyway, long story short, um, nothing nice to say, don't say it all, I swear to god. With that being said though, if you're here for the paint job, welcome. This paint job is gonna cover Black Ice from Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, this is gonna be, I'm gonna warn you, more of a visual uh, tutorial than a verbal one. I haven't taught anything like this in god knows how long. I am out of the game, I'm rusty, bear with me. Anyway, yes. Also, don't look at this maple leaf, it is fat and I don't know why. So, enjoy the video. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, yeah. Also, if you have any sort of suggestions or requests for other siege paint jobs that you want to see, let me know in the comments and I will attempt to uh, satisfy your need for that gun skin. Okay. With that being said, you're finally free. Here you go. All right, let's get started. First up is paints. This is all the shit you're gonna need for this black ice tutorial. Um, none of this is in particular order, just a heads up. Uh, first, you're gonna need floating medium. It's not completely necessary, but it does give a really nice little effect to the layering. You're gonna need a white. Um, this, this brand does not exist anymore, so just get a good opaque white. A neutral tone navy, guys, all right? Neutral tone navy. All right, then you're gonna need a thick but uh, like translucent white. So I use this slick one from Tulip. You're also gonna have a light blue puffy paint, turquoise puffy paint, and white and black puffy paint. Um, these ones you can still get at any craft store. Uh, I mainly picked them because not only I had really two really, really good colors, but they are really good at being able to be translucent, but also really opaque if you want them to be. They aren't really actually puffy. Uh, then you're just going to need a really good opaque black. They don't make this one anymore, so just pick which one you like. Alrighty, let's talk brushes. So number one, you're going to need, these are the ones that I used. Uh, number one, you're going to need a camel hair brush. This is going to do all the work for you. It's super duper soft. I know when you hear camel, you're like, oh, scratchy. No, it's, it's nice and soft and it gives a really good um, lay down of your paint. Next, you're going to want these really thin brushes. These are gold lacklon brushes. Um, they want, you want something with a spring to it. You don't want a camel hair where it's going to spread out. 
Next, you're gonna need a sponge. Uh, this is a makeup sponge that I got from Walmart. You want it to be nice and thick and you wanna rip it apart like I did up top. Uh, just kind of take your nail and pinch it. No rhyme or reason to it. This is gonna help. All right, so we're gonna do the white first. You're gonna put a thin, fairly thin layer on about half of the prop. Depending on what gun you're painting this on, uh, they may already have black ice for said gun, so you can just follow a picture of that. Um, obviously, they don't have black ice for the scorpion yet, so I kind of had to leave it up to my own imagination. Um, I think I loosely looked more at Thermite's gun um, for reference to mine. Uh, also, before any of you smartasses in chat uh, get crazy in the comments, um, I'm well aware we don't have black ice for this gun. I just, I, it's been primered for almost a year and I just wanted something cool on it, okay? Also, I think black ice would look dope on the scorpion, so shut the fuck up. Uh, also, cause last time I posted a foam, foam, F-O-A-M, gun prop, um, everybody wanted to yell at me that it wasn't accurate. Okay, smartass, you go make a, a gun out of foam. Try it. Okay, leave me alone. Anyway. We are starting out with our puffy paint turquoise. I'm kind of doing a stippling motion while also doing a quote unquote brush motion. Um, it really, there's literally no rhyme or reason. It's whatever you think will look good. Then I am taking our sponge with the remaining amount of turquoise and I am sponging that on. Um, if there's any white left in your brush, even better. It will add to the effect. Again, this is a layering thing guys the more layers the better the other part that is really uh, gonna make a difference with this sponge is when you go to blend the turquoise into the white um, there's not a whole lot of blending it's pretty much just like a frosted effect obviously black ice duh. Um, but you want to make sure that you cover a vast majority of the black parts in the turquoise and the blue um, again you can take the blue up as far as you want. That's all dependent on you, what weapon you're doing, so on and so forth. Um, and the other good thing about the sponge is it leaves some uh, more thick, opaque areas, which is what you want. Um, it helps with that sort of shattered look. Uh, now, I started taking the brush and doing the same thing, and it was just way too much, so I kind of eventually went it back in with the sponge, I believe, and fixed it and evened it out. The other thing that you can do is you can pile it on your blue or your turquoise and then let the edges sort of dry and then stipple it off with the sponge and it gives sort of a similar look to it, if that makes any sense. taking that light blue this one right here and we're taking the camel hair brush and we are just gonna stipple it around um, you don't want your bristles to be absolutely like perfect and clean because you want them to be somewhat separate so I kind of just did it with a damp brush uh, I would also highly recommend getting a chip brush I'll insert a picture of a chip brush somewhere around in here it will probably help you guys a little bit better um, depending on what you're doing again and what you prefer if you like how this looks then you can do exactly what I did if you don't I would suggest a chip brush alrighty now we're starting with the navy blue um, you can actually still get this I just looked it up um, it is acquired or owned by the played uh, paint company so wherever plate is sold, you should be able to find it. Um, I would highly suggest getting that exact one. Black and white literally don't matter with acrylic paints. The only times where it does matter, like the, the type of paint you're getting, is uh, that puffy and the, um, the slick from Tulip, just because of how they react. Um, but I'm mixing the navy blue with the black, um, and I'm just kind of going all over uh, most of like the ending areas you're probably will be like why did you even do the little turquoise underneath in the first place 
We will get into that in a second. Once again, the more layers, the better. It doesn't matter. Again, the more layers, the better. You want this to look as three-dimensional as fucking possible, all right? focus the main paint towards the bottom and then when you get less paint on your brush go ahead and dry brush the, the top areas then take that sponge again and start sponging all over where you just painted the navy and the black see how that turquoise is starting to come up a little bit that's what you want that's exactly what you want and that sponge is doing all the work for you in terms of what it looks like <laughs> more layering we're gonna get our white acrylic paint back out again get your brush and you're basically just gonna cover everything that you went over with the light blue paint um, you're gonna probably want to do more even coats towards the front of the prop um, just because if you look at black ice it is more concentrated with white towards the front and then gradually as your brush runs out of paint it will start to melt with the blue. Um, some of this you want to wait until things are dry and some of it doesn't really matter because you really just want it to mix and melt together. see wherever we put the, the light blue in the center of the prop where the white is it's already kind of coming through and it's giving sort of a layered effect um, you want to take your sponge and obviously blend where the <laughs> original test of the paint is um, this side didn't really particularly end up as perfect as the first time that's just because I didn't do the prop all together. I did half of it and showed you the other half because I wanted to make sure I did everything correctly um, before recording it. Um, but it still it still matches pretty well. My my little uh, maple leaf uh, unfortunately didn't really match the other side, but that's fine. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna be taking that flat end of the sponge and just blending blending to your little heart's desire you obviously don't want it to be like a per perfect gradient you just want it to be not uh harsh i guess you could say Alrighty, next i took the light blue and my little my little sponge here we're using the flat side of the sponge i'm checking where i did it on the other original side and i am just stippling very lightly all over the white that we just added um, again layering guys layering um, you're gonna want to put this closer to where the two colors meet um, as well as around the top again looking at a picture you just kind of you just kind of go for it um, I believe I did this when the white was still fairly damp esque because uh, again you want it to melt together
my favorite part about working with a sponge. Um, whatever you put on it, it typically won't dry until quite a few hours later if you've used it heavily. So all the colors that we mixed with that uh, blue, the navy blue and the black, and then the white is still on our side of the sponge that's all ripped up. So I'm just tapping it on all of the edges of the prop, like the harsh edges, um, to give it more of a black ice layered look. And then whenever I stipple it, I will take the side of the sponge that has the white and the light blue and I go over it to blend it. Um, the best way I can describe doing this is uh, special effects like zombie uh, bruise makeup. If you guys have ever done that, this is very much uh, similar to it with the sponge. Here's where that white puffy paint comes into play, um, where you don't want a super big concentration of white, but you need it just enough to tone something down. This is where that comes in, the comes in handy. Uh, put that on your flat side of the sponge and just kind of stipple it on. And then I also went in with the slick one. I think the slick one ended up working better, so you might just be able to get away with not having the puffy white paint. Uh, again, this is literally just to see how it's kind of coagulating in some spots. That's exactly what you want. See, we're already getting there. All of these layers, all of them just, they, they all end up working out in the end. It's a it's definition of trust the process. The crucial thing to not making this look super duper flat is you are going to take the remaining um, white that's on your flat side of your uh, sponge and you're going to go over the black. You're going to focus this primarily on the edges because um, again you're trying to make this look as frosty as possible. Um, so again taking that sponge and just kind of seeing where you want to add more and then you're going to start you're going to focus it mainly on the edges um and the the top i worked out later down the road um but we're just focusing on the edges of the the prop uh it, this is i think the only tricky part if you aren't used to using this technique um less is more in this case and i'll show you that later now if you look at black, yep, this is this is gonna be your baby. If you look at black ice, it almost has sort of a cracked ice look to it. So you're gonna add those on. I don't think I recorded doing it, but here are the little bits that I ended up doing. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix the black, the navy blue, and the floating medium. Um, and I'm gonna show you what you do with it. After you've mixed all of that together, I think I did, uh, you add more floating medium than you think you're going to need. Um, floating medium basically um, makes a, well, it makes it look like it's floating. Um, you're going to take that and put it all over those harsh white lines that you did. Mine were kind of thick, I'm not going to lie. The other side looks way better. This is basically to make them look like they're underneath the paint, obviously because they are. Um, and you're just gonna stipple it. I think I did too much blue and I think I had to go over it in the end. I literally recorded this, I'm not even kidding, like almost seven months ago. So uh, yeah, I am trying to remember everything that I did during this voiceover. <laughs> Now 
one trick you can do with the sponge since it basically blends everything on its own is you can add see i did do the i did do more black but you can also add your floating medium to it um and then assuming all of your paint is still wet on your prop you can sort of again give it this like three-dimensional type of look that's the best way i can describe it um it's been a minute since I've taught any sort of art before, guys. Also, I haven't done a tutorial in quite a few months, so bear with me. Words are increasingly hard. This point I pretty much just kept going over it um, until I got what I wanted um, focusing again making it darker towards the ends so the end of the um, back of it the end of the handle and the end of the mag if I'm saying things wrong in terms of gun anatomy I literally do not care okay guys with peace and love I don't care <laughs> Okay, so now you're gonna add white to your sponge, the side that has all the blue and the black and everything. Um, you're gonna figure out that you have way too much white on it, like a dumbass, um, but you're gonna keep going anyways, and you're gonna stipple that shit all over the edges, all right? All over the edges. See how beautiful that looks when there's not a shit ton of white paint? Oh my God, look at how pretty. You wanna use very light pressure, depending on how pigmented you wanted it. So around the main edges, go a little ham, and then when you get on the flat sides, just barely, barely tap it. Like, let the sponge weight do all of the work. Um, you mainly just want to concentrate it on the harsh edges. In all honesty, this portion of it was probably the longest, um, not only because I was trying to blend and make sure that I got everything looking fairly cohesive uh, amongst both sides, but also um, just making sure, don't go too ham because God putting a dark color on top of this and not fucking it up is a challenge. Um, so just, again, less is more, but keep going keep going just you know what i'm saying taking the turquoise puffy paint and we are putting that on our can our little palette canvas thing taking that camel hair brush and we are stippling it once again um, where the uh, dark and the white meet um, this looked at least in some of the photos of other black ice where it was pretty heavy with the blue um, so that's kind of just where I added it. You can see where I'm kind of just like figuring out where else I want it, checking my other side. So you can still see the little white lines, but they're not like, bam, here I am. Uh, if you look really close, they don't really show very much on camera. If you look close, you can still pretty much 
see them perfectly. Well, not perfectly, but you guys know what I mean. But yeah, guys, I feel like this was more of a visual teaching than a the verbal teaching because I I've been out of the game for so long but you're just gonna kind of continue touching up figure out what colors you want to add what you need to take away what you need to keep buffing out and then this is the final product coat that shit in a lot of clear top coat put your little maple leaf on it and you are all set my dude um yeah hopefully this helped if you have any questions let me know don't look at the maple leaf in this picture 